when you got things that are just, they're going so well, and then something happens and just ruins everything. Oh. Talking about an M. Night Shyamalan movie? That, that's, that's, a, that's a good, that's actually a really good comparison there. I was thinking also the set that I had set up that fell over just like a minute before we started recording this. Uh, kind of what WWE did. The WWE had a really good week last week. They did? Battleground was awesome. pay was good. Raw was awesome. Raw was done well. Smackdown was pretty damn good. Smackdown was fun to watch. NXT was fun. At, well, always. And then the Cruiserweight Classic. Most definitely. So, I mean, we're a week closer to SummerSlam. The slam of the summer. And so, you know, Monday Night Raw, you should be excited. Granted, they're talking about, oh, the return of Brock Lesnar and all this shit. Which I know doesn't excite you. No. Let's talk about the stuff that was okay, though. Because sure. Raw had some moments. It had moments, yeah. First off, just kind of combine these two. I like that they're doing the jobber matches for Braun and Nia. Absolutely. I think these work perfectly for both of them. Uh, Evan Anderhog got his ass kicked just like James Ellsworth did last week. It works well for Braun, and it actually makes him feel like a real threat. Yeah. Nia gets to be a little bit more dominant going against actual female wrestlers uh, who look like they could be on the roster, but she gets to smush them. And that fucking fireman's carry into a slam thing is pretty badass. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Don't t- Google search her opponent, though. No? At work, at least. Oh, the name Ariel Monroe is apparently also a widely popular porn star. So be sure to add wrestler yeah. if you Google. Uh, or you end up with a lot of uh, NSFWs. Yes. Pictures. Um, so then Especially we have... if you type in Ariel Monroe getting slammed. <laughs> <laughs> so then, okay, so then we had a couple other matches that kind of went together. We had Mark Henry wanting to get another run in WWE. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, you know, he's supposed History. to be the ambassador to the Olympics, and that's kind of what Stephanie just wants him to do. Uh, but Mick gives him a shot against Rusev for the U.S. Championship. They have a pretty good physical match, which makes Rusev look Mark like... Mark Henry tried to murder Rusev on the middle yeah, rope. Yeah, tried to pretty much decapitate Rusev. By Somebody else did that earlier in the show. Uh, and I felt primo. like... Yeah, and uh, but I felt like Mark Henry tried to copy it <laughs> and didn't realize that... No, it's it's much much better suited to the luchador-type wrestlers as opposed to the 400-pound uh, heavyweight uh, power lifters. Yeah, um, I mean, Big Boss Man did it, but at some point... He was a little bit more agile than... Uh, I mean, he used to do Herkimeranas and stuff, too, so... Yeah, you know, well, I liked it when he... Uh, he would slide under the bottom rope and just uppercut the guy. I don't remember that. That was a boss man. That's table. cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, it makes Rusev look even more like a beast uh, when he's able to beat Mark Henry because like kicking him in his neck roll. Yeah, he, yeah, he ends up uh, dodging out of the way of a big boot, hits the big spin kick, does the big super kick to the back of the head, and then makes him tap out to the accolade. And then it's funny because then Roman Reigns gets. First, okay, I'm going to rant a little bit here. Why is Roman Reigns still going after a champion? This is bullshit. Because he's Vince McMahon's boy. But it's okay because now he's demoted to the U.S. title. Which is funny because that's the first title that Dean Ambrose won. Now Dean Ambrose is champion. (laughs) Role reversal. (laughs) So, I don't know. Uh, Rusev versus Roman Reigns could be fun. It's going to be physical. Yeah. That's that's what's making me look forward to it. I like their interaction here. It was good, uh, and you know it, it helps that Rusev is more of a he's a different type of heel than he was his first run as U.S. champion. Yes, because he was just so dominant then. He's way more established now. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Now he's established. He's got more of a personality. He's got Lana who talks even more for him now, as opposed to just the very simple. This is Rusev. He will crush you. Yeah, now let's be honest though. The the, the MVP of this segment was Lana's dress. Thank you. Damn. Please and thank you. Damn. M O A R, please. More please. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Rusev and Roman Reigns. 
probably going to be the U.S. title match at SummerSlam. Yeah, why not? We'll see how that goes. But then this translated into Sheamus and Cesaro both complaining that they deserve the shot instead of Mark Henry. And so they're like, okay, well, Mick, again, Mick was making a lot of the good decisions on yeah. Raw tonight. Mick's like, okay, well, how about we have a match between you two and the winner will get a future championship match. And they're like, okay, that sounds cool. And so we had a good physical match between Sheamus and Cesaro. Uh, Sheamus good, was there. Uh, I, I thought Sheamus did good. Um, I was like, the one spot is when Cesaro did his, like, crash off the apron onto Sheamus. And, like, he landed on Sheamus's leg. When Sheamus, oh, yeah, yeah. Sheamus caught him and fell over, and then Cesaro landed on his leg. So I was like, oh, ow. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, two hundred plus pound guy landing on your legs probably not comfortable. Yeah, I was, it's a good. Uh, the finish was fun too. Yeah, the finish was fantastic because what this was is, okay, Cesaro gets to look strong while looking flashy and pick up a good win for himself. Yeah, and then they kept. And by looking strong, we don't mean it in the way like they make Roman Reigns look strong. No, it's like, like he looks strong because he does a move like the neutralizer to Sheamus. Yeah, a after. Uh, reversing out of a tilt world backbreaker, which is pretty fucking awesome. Uh, so, you know, Cesaro being Cesaro. Because and then, Cesaro. you know, and then they keep the fight going afterwards, and, you know, they beat the hell out of each other. And then that leads into a segment that I'll rant about in a second, which started off cool and then ended really shitty. Um, but, uh, overall, we had two really good segments on Rod and I. We open the show with what started as a Sasha Charlotte promo. Yes, we'll start with Sasha reiterating that her time being the women's champion is now and yep. that she's going to be the female face of the new era. Exactly. Which leads to Charlotte coming out and saying she's basically a paper champion and she's only holding on till SummerSlam when she gets a rematch. Yeah. Uh, the. Well, yeah, they take some good shots at each yeah, other. Yeah, uh, yeah. As you know, instead of a paper champion, she called her. She was a one night stand, and Sasha came back with, "Well, speaking of one night stands, you being the daughter of Ric Flair, if it wasn't for a one night stand, you probably wouldn't be here anyway." And so that got a big row, rouse from the crowd. So they were. This is a really catty promo. Yeah, uh, and then Maybe there have been a couple of catty little twats. A couple of catty little twats, and that's okay. Um, so then, yeah, so then, like, the disrespect to Charlotte brings out, uh... Chris Jericho, of all yeah, people. Yeah, Jericho telling Sasha to be quiet, calling her a brat, and saying that she's disrespecting Charlotte, who's even better than her dad. Because, yeah, who did you know, Ric Flair ever beat? Yeah, yeah, who did Ric Flair ever beat? You know, I know who Charlotte's gonna beat. She's gonna beat you at SummerSlam and take back her championship. Pretty sure Ric Flair beats Chris Jericho. Yeah, I'm positive that happened at least once. Um, and Sting. Yeah. Triple H. Yeah. Hogan. Yeah. Big Show. Yeah. I think so. Uh, a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, he's Ric Flair. He wrestled for 30 fucking years. Yeah. Not Undertaker, though. No. 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 Not even with Arn Anderson's help. Wow. Remember that? Yeah. Arn Anderson delivering probably was the last spine buster of his career. WrestleMania 18? Mm -hmm. Picture yeah. perfect on Undertaker, too. Yeah. Motherfucker. Yeah. Um, but then, Jericho, uh, his, I guess, uh, his disrespect towards Sasha brings out a very unlikely hero, quote-unquote, because Sasha doesn't really need a hero, but someone to, come, a hero. Someone to come out and kind of even the sides. Not we get, Chris Hero. We get Enzo Amore. Yeah. Who, as so if, now we're going to get a bunch of New England attitude over here. So, as if this promo hadn't already been fantastic, we get Enzo, who comes out, spends the first couple minutes trying to hit on Sasha. I'll let that slide. Uh, just kidding. Enzo, How are you doing? Enzo to probably knock my head off anyway. Um, but then, then, he, then he starts the shots. Yeah, and he starts taking jabs at Jericho, and it's saying just, that his slow promos are dumb. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like, like like when you're on Messenger and you get those three little dots and they keep jumping them down. I'm like anticipating, and then you never hit send. <laughs> yeah, when he's on the microphone, time passes like a kidney stone. <laughs> so, uh, 
for the first time in we can think for fucking ever, Mick Foley makes a mixed tag team. Once again, Mick Foley making the fucking moments of the night happen on this Raw. Yeah. Making a mixed tag team match between these two teams. Uh, and they had instant chemistry. Uh, it was interesting to see Enzo with someone other than Cass. Yes, because sometimes he likes to do his business one-on-one, -on -one, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Certified G wants to put a deposit in the Sasha bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means uh, sex. He wants to do the sex with Sasha. Shit. No condom on. Bad no, no condiments? No, he doesn't want to have a condom on. It's condiments. He wants, he wants to make a deposit. What's a condom on? It's a Digimon. Ricardo Condomon? <laughs> that was anyway. Terrible. <laughs> Ricardo is this. It works. Anyway. No, it doesn't. Uh, no, and then. over here being sad the rest okay, of the Okay, that's fine. Uh, no, this was a fucking. This was a, a, a fun match to see all of these people in a much different element. Than they did they a double dive. Yeah, yeah, double dive for Enzo and Sasha after a double clothesline over the top. Uh, Sasha, on her dive, ended up doing a crossbody with her back. Yeah. Which was interesting. Um, I felt like she wasn't sure what direction she was going to go. Yeah, she, well, she, she went and then she's like, oh, I'm turning. <laughs> she just happened to turn in midair and just. Landed right on Charlotte, and it was just. At least she didn't scorpion again. No, that's that's a good thing, and it was just it was good to see like something different, but still made sense within the context of what was going on. All right, Shane, Dana, Bryan, you gotta one up this. Yeah, we'll we'll see how intergender tag team. Yeah, match. yeah, there you go. We'll we'll see we'll see how SmackDown. Uh, uh, Let's have Natty versus Kalisto. Up. Let's do this. Hell yeah, I'd watch the hell out of that. Do it. Um, so then, uh, as Enzo and Jericho are, are, are fighting it out, um, Sasha goes, or uh, Charlotte goes for an O'Connor roll on Sasha, which Sasha reverses into her own. And this is a, this is after Dana Brooke tried to get involved, too. She she all of a sudden ran down, even though she wasn't out there with Charlotte. So yeah, It was kind of weird because we had... Charlotte with no Dana Brooke and Enzo with no cast. Exactly. Everybody was missing something. Yeah. And so, yeah, so, 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 Dana, Jericho. so Dana tried to get involved, and uh, Sasha ended up slapping the shit out of her, and she fell out of the ring. So then after Charlotte kicks out of the reversed O'Connor roll, this sends Sasha over to the corner where she slaps the shit out of Jericho, and Jericho, like, fumbles down to the outside. And while she's, like, yelling at Jericho... Sasha gets kicked in the back of the leg, which dropped her to her knees, and then Charlotte's able to hit natural selection and pick up the win. Then, while Enzo is checking on Sasha, Jericho gets in and hits Enzo with the code breaker, which then brings out Cass, and Cass scares off Jericho. And then this led into a hilarious promo from Jericho later on. Yeah, where he talks about his... You know, that Enzo and Cass have each other's back, just like Jericho and, uh, Jim, Jim and... Jim and Marvin Luter? Jim and Marvin Luter. Yeah. Uh, but he doesn't need Jim and Marvin Luter, because apparently he has Kevin Owens in his corner. So I am suggesting WWE book this. Next week on Raw, Braun Strowman's squash match opponent needs to be Jim and Marvin Luter. <laughs> The toughest guys, the toughest guys south of Winnipeg. Yeah. Uh, yeah he won the shot put in 08. 2008. <laughs> Owens comes what does and that goes. What does mean? Owens he won is like the shot put. That's not even a real person. But that's okay because I've got your back. And Jericho's like, like I said, Kevin Owens has yeah, got like, my back. Yeah, he's like I said the whole time. It's Kevin I said Owens. The whole time. So, uh, yeah, no, Jericho was. He called him. Uh, he called Tom Phillips, like Todd Ted, Todd, and Tim. Tim, and they kept, and he's like, he's like, that's what I said, Tim. It's it's Tom. It's Tim. Stupid, Stupid idiot. idiot. <laughs> so, Jericho was on another level. Tonight. Get a stupid idiot T-shirt, please. 
Uh, then we also had... I've never a, bought Jericho merch before, but I think I might buy a Stupid Idiot t-shirt. He has actually gone on record saying there will not be a Stupid Idiot t-shirt. Well... That remains to be seen. Uh, then we had what was supposed to be an interview with Finn Balor turned into a Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins promo, uh, which was good for both of these guys, uh, adding a lot of hype to this. This match is going to be fucking fantastic. I'm yeah. so excited to see this yeah, match. Yeah, can't wait for Fergal Devitt versus Colby Perez. Colby Lopez. Lopez Perez. Perez. What's one of those? One of those names had a Z in it. No, Seth, Seth and Finn talking shit to each other. Uh, it, it's it's good that Finn has the presence that he does. He fits into the main roster really well. Yeah. Uh, and so having him really have that good sparring moment with uh, with Seth was good. And then even getting the one up when Seth tried to attack him, and then doing like his little kung fu in, like palm strike back kick Pele. Yeah. Really good Pele, too. And yeah. Seth's like, Seth, okay, I'm done. Seth acted like a soccer ball and went yeah. out of the ring like a goal. And, 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 one, you know, and one of the things was, you know, Seth said he was going to make an example by beating Finn's friend, Sami Zayn, which was our main event match. Yeah. And they fucking killed it. Well, they're A good. badass match between the two of them. Another badass finish where Sami actually reverses a pedigree Backs up, goes for a haluva kick, gets caught up in the corner, turns around into another pedigree, and Seth Rollins picks up the win. Uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah. I was really hoping Seth would counter Sami Zayn's uh, dive over the top rope into a pedigree. <laughs> oh, God. Realistic? Pedigree to the outside? Realistic? No, but would it look really cool? Probably. I mean, S Seth has it done... Looks like something out of the WWE All-Stars game. Seth has done a pretty good job of turning all these just random moves into a pedigree. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it eventually. Can you turn the curb stomp into a pedigree? Already been done. Yeah. Because it was his finisher. Get it, he turned it. Yeah. Finish. Switch Moving finishers. Uh, we finished the night with what oh, I God. was just assuming was going to be Another one of those segments where Paul Heyman tries to sell me Brock Lesnar, and I don't want to fucking buy it because it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bork Laser, the dope fiend. Yeah. Not really dope, but, you know, estrogen blocker, which makes you sound like you're you trying know, not to get boobs. Well, what, uh, whatever. You know, it increases um, your body's testosterone production. I was, you know, I've just, I've been sick of Brock Lesnar for a while. It doesn't help that all of a sudden he has... These, you know, these same accusations that we just had Roman Reigns suspended for a month for. And I'm pissed off at Roman Reigns. So this doesn't make me like Brock Lesnar anymore. So yeah. I, I actually... I, I want to go on clarification and go, I feel like this is worse than the Roman Reigns. Because at least Brock, you know, Brock Lesnar was caught with a legitimate, like, you know, boost your testosterone, get yourself jacked up. Well, Roman Reigns was for Adderall, which is just, like, basically mask the pain that you go mm. through when you're in this moment. You know, something sort of, not a painkiller, but help you, you know, a not focus suppressor. on that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And so, then, on, you know... You know so, I, Lesnar's was even more shameful. Yeah. And so... Shame. Shame, Lesnar. Shame, Beast of the Broctagon. That is the stupidest fucking nickname you've ever come up it's with. The all. ugliest shape I've ever heard of. Uh, so yeah, I tuned out for this promo. Yeah. I didn't Until really... Paul Heyman says Brock's gonna beat your ass. Yeah, yeah. Paul got real ghetto with it a couple times. That was funny. Even after calling himself the wise old Jew. Yeah, and then you know, and I, I kind of you don't hear many wise old Jews say beat your ass. <laughs> no. And so I looked up a few times, but then I was like, oh, okay, and he's just gonna keep going. And I was just kind of looking through my notes so it was for this video. And then all of a sudden, something happened. It doesn't usually happen to Brock Lesnar, but it happened. It he does. got hit with an RKO out of fucking nowhere. Hashtag out of nowhere. And it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. No, and then I, he ran through the crowd because, yeah, he's not a wrong guy. He's yeah, not, supposed, it, to, it, and he's it, not it, supposed to be there. It didn't hit me until we, we actually went back and we watched it again that, yeah, he's a SmackDown guy. He's not even supposed to be there. 
Nope. And Stephanie and Mick run down, and a bunch of the, the Raw guys run down, and they're, you know, he's up there at the top of the stairs, taking his shirt off and posing and hanging out with people, and Stephanie is just living at this point. Lesnar is just, he, Lesnar doesn't even realize what just happened. He's just fucking out of it. So, it was a good way to finish the night, uh, especially when what I thought I was going to get was just another long-winded, this is how cool Brock Lesnar is promo. Well, let's talk about the stuff that wasn't so good. There were things that didn't set well with us. First I, off... I, can, can, I, can I start? Yeah, sure. Go for it. There were, what, three matches that ended with types of roll-ups? Mm -hmm. Two of them schoolboys, if I'm correct. Yes. Yeah, the, the, fir the first one was a sun like a cool sunset flip, but once again, it was because of Pokemon Go. Which, let's be real, we don't have any issues with that game. We play, we it. play it on a regular basis on our cellular devices. Don't take any information because this is actually... Uh, the chat part of Snapchat. Hashtag uh, Valor Club. For the life. Uh, but the problem is, when that becomes a storyline for our truth to not tag Gold Dust, just to give the Shining Stars some sort of credibility on the roster, why? One thing I'll say about this, though, is I had fun watching some of the spots that they had in this match. Yeah, I mean, th that's the thing, is that we've got four really great athletic people in this match. Goldust does things that a person at his age probably shouldn't be able to. Yeah. And then Primo and Epico are fantastic in the ring. They they have just... Well, if you think about it, it's like with Goldust and Primo and Epico, you have, you know, wrestling bloodlines. Yeah, exactly. Going on in there. So there's a lot of experience going on. And then Archer literally did nothing the whole match. And see, and normally I, I'm okay with R-Truth being the funny guy. You know, last week with the, oh, screwing the Shining Stars out of the match, which they were probably going to lose anyway because they went, went against Enzo and Cass, but screwing them because of Pokemon Go, that was funny. But leave it there. Yeah. Pokemon Go was great. Like we said, we play it, but it doesn't need to be the basis of every match going forth with... The Golden Truth. Because that's fucking overkill. Yeah. Just because you want to get a name on your show that'll maybe get people searching. No one's going to search that shit. Because then they're going to realize that R-Truth probably isn't really playing the game because he doesn't keep trying to grab at Pokemon that aren't actually there. Now the second one that made even less sense, all of a sudden Titus O'Neil wants to be dick. Yeah. And call out Darren Young for never being great. Bitch, he was the only great part about when you were the tag team champions. No, that, that was right? that was the most heartfelt bitch I've Did ever you heard. Hear the conviction. That was that was fantastic. Titus O'Neil, a punk ass little bitch. Uh, I, you know what I haven't called him in a long time? Hmm. Horse faced bitch. I don't think you ever called him horse faced bitch, but yeah. It's, it, it, it fits now. Bob Backlund couldn't even carry a good match with you. That's how sucky you are. Um, I'm talking like 1975 Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund now could probably wrestle better than Titus O'Neil. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so Somebody gave me some healing real quick. So, I, let me get this straight. We had this three-week program of Darren Young going after The Miz for the Intercontinental title. Mm -hmm. And the brand split happens. I understand that. So Miz is now on SmackDown. You can't so, fight because Darren Young's you know, on Raw. So Darren Young doesn't necessarily have a title to go after unless you want to put him against Rusev. You probably don't want to do that. Not yet, at least. But your next step for this guy you've been building on TV for months now is to once again put him against his former tag team partner who you've been pushing like a face 
for fucking ever for why to have him lose with a roll up while well, holding the tights. Even though it was funny to watch Darren Young punch him in the face in the back while he was yelling at Bob Backlund. That was my favorite part. That was the best part of this whole situation. Yeah. Uh, but why? Also, like, the other thing that bugs me about this is why did Titus O'Neil need to use a roll up? Yeah. He's, he's Titus O'Neil. He's literally, like, twice as big as Darren Young. Yeah. He shouldn't have had to cheat. He's fucking. He's a monster. A horse faced monster bitch. Dad of the year, my ass. Alright, so then we had another roll up. At least this one was in a segment that made sense. But it was still another roll up. The match was the New Day versus the club. Yeah. Which was good. We like right. we like both the New Day and the club. Um, the match doesn't last very long, even though there was like a like a specific like, hey, one of whoever's not in the match has to be banned from ringside. The promo, the pre-match promo by the New Day was about as long as the actual match was. It might have even been longer, where they explained that you know they didn't like the club and that Xavier Woods couldn't be a ringside. So it yeah. was just Kofi and Big E. Uh, and uh, there was phallic fruit involved uh, in the promo. That was funny. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, the match is basically the club beat up on Big E for a while. Uh, they, he wants to tag Kofi, but Gallows, who's not a legal man, rolls around the ring and uh, keeps that from happening. Yeah. And then Anderson's like, oh, good job, dude. And Gallows is like, I know, let's do the too sweet thing. And they do it. But then Biggie's like, hey, brah, check it out. Roll up. Yeah. I'm going to beat you. So. And then the club beat the shit out of the new guy. That was, it's, it's sad, but it's good. Yeah. Because it, it was a very good moment. Probably the best moment Gallows and Anderson have had since their debut. I don't know. I still like them beating up John Cena. Yeah, that's that's good, but I think I think I think it does better for them as a unit to beat up Cena, just because I think he is one of the few people on the roster that's more notor has more notoriety than the New Day. True, but to have these two guys literally destroy all three members of the New Day by themselves yeah. makes it look like a legitimate threat. It was good, very good moment. And uh, they broke Biggie's testicles. Yeah, Biggie was in the training room later, and they're he's like, "I'm fine, I'm fine," but he kept holding his balls because they the referees or the trainers like, "Show me where it hurts." Yeah, and I'm like, "Oh, uh, don't, don't, don't touch him on camera." Don't, uh, don't, don't do it. Don't uh, do it. yeah, they ended up like that's a no no zone. They yanked him into the post, um, wishbone style. Yeah, uh, like the dog. so I mean, it was again, it was a good segment, but. Why did we have to have three roll-ups? Yeah. Then... Two of them by gigantic black guys. Yeah. Then... Does uh, Heath Slater? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Post Cesaro Sheamus... Yeah, so apparently well, they just kept fighting after the match was yeah. over, and we cut to a commercial. Yeah. So we yeah we come back from commercial. Cesaro and Sheamus are still fighting. Um, then all of a sudden Heath Slater gets on the microphone. You're a awesome. Fight. Awesome. Okay. Cool. He's all for letting Cesaro and Sheamus fight. And each that other. and that's cool. Heath Slater. You know he's he, we we saw him last week on SmackDown. You know being the victim to Rhino. That was cool, and it's part of his shtick. Like hey, you need to. You need to sign Heath Slater because Heath Slater does things for your roster. That's cool. But then we cut to the, the ring and he's there with my least favorite member of 3MB and Jinder Mahal. So we got Rhino coming back. We got Shelton Benjamin coming back. What other talented guy can we get? We get fucking Jinder Mahal. The fuck did he? He had a storyline with the great Kali. That's his claim to fame. And being the other guy in 3MB. Let's be real. I'm going to open up honestly about Jinder Mahal right now. 
I don't remember ever seeing him wrestle. Uh, yeah. And, and mainly, I'm gonna go like mainly the early part of his career because I I quickly stopped paying attention to Great Kali. Oh yeah. Uh, so I mean that's a little bit on Booking's fault that right. I didn't really pay attention to Jinder Mahal. I'll give you that. Uh, but then you got because he got put in three MB where it was just. We paid te- we paid attention to him because he was with Drew Drew Galloway and Heath Slater. Yeah, and it's you know he was the. Th- Unfortunately, what you had there was three talented guys who just had to put everyone on the entire fucking rest of the roster over. Uh, two talented guys in Jinder Mahal. Um, he looks way different though when he's when not, he's in a, when he's in like a suit or like a he had like, like a vest on. Yeah, vest. Uh, yeah, not vest in slacks. Like, not in like uh, leather pants and a turban. Yeah, <laughs> not any kind of like. Throwback to like his heritage, yeah, and or rock style clothes. Exactly. Uh, he he looked. Yeah, I called him Heath Slater's Jesus. Yeah. No, he actually looked very much like Jesus. Oh, he's like Jesus and Armando Estrada like smushed together. Hey Mondo. Hey Mondo. Hey Mondo. Or Arzus. Hey Mondo's better. Hey Mondo. Yeah. Hey Mondo. Uh, so anyway, so there was potential here because. It, I know it's not going to happen, because I think he's still in TNA. If there was a chance that Drew Galloway was coming back and we were going to get 3MB back together, okay, fine. We can bring back Jinder Mahal for that. I'll, okay, fine. And that's kind of what we started. Yeah. But then it turns out that apparently the Raw roster only has one extra spot. Yeah, Foley came out and said, hey, why don't you guys have a match? Because we have one open spot on the roster right now. And whoever wins the match can have it. And, and he's, he's, he's like, no, there's no way you're breaking up two-man band. There's no way. He, he's my brother. And Jinder Mahal's like, yeah, dude, totally, I got your back. And then he sneaks away, and there's a referee in the ring, and Jinder Mahal's like, hey, ref, ring the bell real quick. I bet Heath won't hear it. And the bell rings, and then Heath Slater turns around and gets his face kicked in. That was the other thing I didn't realize is how tall Jinder Mahal was. Yeah, I didn't catch. I didn't. I didn't see him he, as a big booting kind of guy. Heath Heath Slater was was the shortest member of Three MB. Uh, so instead of using Heath Slater, who's been on TV regularly for the last four or five months with the Social Outcasts, being signed to Raw and or SmackDown. You bring back Jinder Mahal, who got no reaction whatsoever other than me going, fucking really? I, I think I know what they're doing with Heath Slater here. He's the, hey, guess who we're bringing back this week? Yeah, it's legitimately the same thing that led up to that... Uh whatever episode oh, of Raw. Oh, when he brought back all the legends, and then eventually Alito was the last one to... Yeah, all the legends, well, where this is uh, Heath Slater versus the return of all the mid-carters. So... They already they already did the legends, they're like, what else can we do? We're like, how about mid-card people? Yeah. So we got Rhino, we got Jenner for Hall. So... It's, he's well, going to be Shelton Benjamin's yeah, return he's gonna, match. Yeah, he's going to be Shelton Benjamin's return match. Or Shelton's just going to like springboard and like clothesline him in the face or something. See who else they bring back. Fingers crossed for Finley. I don't think so. I don't really want to see Heath Slater get hit in the face with a shillelagh. I like Heath Slater. I don't like Jinder Mahal. RVD? RVD's not. I don't think RVD's coming back. So. It's got to do high. Yeah, man. Way more likely than Grandmaster Six. Definitely. So, the moral of the story... The Highlanders. Yeah, fucking right. Yeah, no, they got let go because, what, Robbie was caught at a fucking TNA event. Something like that. Raw had its moments. But even with the brand split, they're still up to their old fucking tricks. This just means that we don't need the third hour on Raw. 
Absolutely. Because they're filling it with bullshit. Yeah, because what we didn't mention is the beginning of Raw when they had the mixed tag team match. That segment was legitimately the first 40 minutes of Monday Night Raw for one match. A promo and a match. But then you squeeze another match right after that with Braun Strowman in like two minutes. Mm -hmm. You know? And then you had the you had the long you had the Seth and Finn promo, and then the short Nia Jax match. Yeah, no, literally, you could have cut both of those promos in half. The one before the mixed tag match, and the one between Seth and Finn. You could have cut those in half, still got all the same points across, and added another two matches or another one long match. Mm-hmm. But we don't write Monday Night Raw. We don't. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Comment what your favorite or your least favorite part of Raw was down below. Yeah, do that. Click the links. Brittany, in the I'm pretty sure you're gonna have a comment about this one. Uh, look at the links in the description. You don't have to click them; just look at them. Even click them though. Because we'd appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, takes you to our social media outlets. Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram. Emails. Uh, and a podcast. Stuff. We get a podcast over at SoundCloud. You know, there's lots of podcasts going over there. But only one of us. Uh, and apparently people really liked last week's Smackdown podcast. Well, let's see what happens this week. Smackdown's tomorrow. Uh, if you want to see that. Look at that thing over there. It's a playlist. It has all the videos we do over here on the YouTubes. SoundCloud people, I'm sorry, but you're going to miss out on Cruiserweight Classic because that's a special deal. And you only get the four weekly staples on the SoundCloud. Yeah, you'll, you know, you'll get occasionally group. get an extra podcast if there's something that I feel like needs to go up. But more often than not, you just get the four on the regular. Yeah, you know, you're not going to get your Cruiserweight Classics. You're not going to get your top five videos. You're not going to get the prediction videos for pay-per-views or the reviews for the pay-per-views. Uh, just the normals. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you want those other ones, go check out our YouTube channel. Yeah. Because stuff. Extra stuff. Yeah. Uh, speaking of extra stuff, we have a secondary channel, Reasonable Wrestling Fans. That's W2F. Uh, check us out over there and see us do other stuff that's not just sit on this couch and talk about stuff you probably already saw on the it's television. It's not review tube. It's more YouTube. Absolutely. And uh, post in the comments what you want to see us do over there, be it weird YouTube challenges yeah. or uh, other wrestling related things. You want us to watch old pay-per-views and review those. Uh, I second that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Fuck roll-ups. Fuck Jinder Mahal. Fuck. Fuck Titus O'Neil. Fuck. Yeah, that was the worst of the whole fucking night. Dad of the year, asshole, fucking horse face, son of a bitch. Dick. Mel. I didn't commit to that last one. <laughs>